It's been great. Uh, I even got to try out the hypnosis on someone this last week, so that was really awesome. Okay, and did it work? Did you get arm catalepsy? So they didn't get the arm movement, but they had a deep uh, relaxation, like a he he described it as like a REM sleep episode almost. Mm -hmm. uh, he right. was able to get the visualizations. All right, sounds sounds good. Keep yeah. practicing. We want yeah. you to advertise the whole of the U.S. Oh yeah. <laughs> good, good. So uh, that brings us to the topic of today. Uh, we start with the third part uh, of neurolinguistic programming. Uh, to repeat what we have done so far, we're doing the ABC NLP practitioner, where ABC stands for antecedent behavior and uh, consequences, and. Uh, Studies of the brain have shown that uh, that most people, while, while they use antecedents to change people's behavior, they uh, tell upfront what they want people to do differently. Actually, uh, research has shown that uh, the consequences of your behavior uh, determine much more uh, what you're going to do in the future than the antecedents. That is why it's important to actually go out and practice and then see that it works, because then your brain goes, oh, this really works, great. And we combine it with neuro linguistic programming NLP, and we have done the first part of NLP, the neuro part, where we uh, looked at uh, how the brain works, uh, especially in um, terms of uh, how you can control what you feel, what you imagine, and what you think, uh, and how to make great decisions. And then we looked into the uh, linguistic part, where we actually uh, had two models: one to clarify. Uh, communicate to clarify and communicate to influence people. And that uh, resulted in hypnosis. That was what we did uh, last week and that you practice, which is great. And um, hi viewers, good to see you here again. So today we're going to do something completely different. We're going to move to part three, the programming part of uh, NLP. And this is actually has to do with how can we capture what someone does well in such a way that we can apply it to ourselves. And if we really like it and it turns out to be uh, working okay, then we can actually pass it on to uh, someone else. And this used to be called uh, modeling. I don't know if you ever heard the term modeling in com combination with neuro-linguistic programming. I have. Uh, I've heard it. I have heard of it at least. Right. Yeah. And so many NLP, uh, I say trainers, they lure uh, people to their courses by promising that they learn to uh, model excellent behavior. But it never happens because how many people do you know that uh, uh, are able to behave in an excellent way that have actually done an NLP course to learn it? And not many. Uh... If any at all. <laughs> Uh, so this, this NLP trainers, again, this is a false claim. It's false advertising. They mm -hmm. claim that if you, for instance, would study a world-class uh, violin of a violin player, um, that you then would uh, be able to learn uh, to play the violin within uh, a very short amount of time and be as good as this world-class uh, violinist, which is, right. of course, crazy. That's not happening at all. Mm -hmm. What's even worse is that they, if you then look what they're actually doing in the courses, it's not actually modeling at all. What they are doing is called uh, strategy el elicitation. They try to find one relevant strategy, and if you find one, they're already quite happy with it. Whereas a model is actually the complete, um, I say, complete set of all relevant uh, uh, strategies. So you have to list many other strategies, more, at least more than one. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll also see, I'm not sure whether we can get to it this week or next week, but we'll see that uh, the, um, how do you say it, uh, that actually modeling is also a, a quite a bad activity because if you have the complete set of all relevant strategies, you, you're going to get so much information that it's very easy to look over some negative stuff and then you're actually learning stuff that makes your life worse because you're just uh, handling too much information and you can't oversee all the implications of what you're learning. Hmm. Um, so the uh, uh, 
important uh, part for today is actually to start to learn how the brain works and even more precise how the brain is able to code uh, the meaning of what uh, at least uh, how we give meaning to our life and we are going to look into how we can actually uh, uh, code mean or somehow somehow code our brain uh, to a way that is uh, handful handy for uh, uh, I say the. I just had to ban a, a rebellious teenager. We're on a platform for teenagers, and sometimes teenagers get past us and <laughs> they start to annoy us. So I had to ban mm -hmm. one. So use my ban hammer to knock them out of the stream. Mm -hmm. And. So the uh, so we're going to see how meaning is actually working inside the brain, and I will start to argue that we have no meaning inside our brain. Actually, that our brain is pretty much a, um, a system that processes syntactically rather mm -hmm. than uh, semantically, and that we are much more in, uh, busy uh, reacting as a robot, even though robot means slave, and I don't want to suggest that you are a slave. <laughs> But there are many unconscious processes that basically um, uh, trigger certain behaviors so that you act in a way that is accepted by society. Of course, all of this has been um, positive reinforced by society by giving you positive consequences when you behave in a way that uh, makes sense. And if you uh, behave in a way that doesn't make sense, we question whether you actually understand the meaning of it all. And if you uh, behave in a way that is, I would say, too confrontational, we put you behind bars, either in jail or in a mental hospital. Oh, really? Because you didn't get the meaning. <laughs> so I'm going to go, remember how we did triangulation when we were discussing uh, communications? Uh, yes. Sparks, the world, you and the other, and the other lines connecting. Uh -huh. So we'll go back to, that uh, image, but I actually uh, took an image from one of my the covers of one of my books, and it's in Dutch. So we have to you, you have to uh, make some amends to translate it to um, uh, English. But again, the red one on the bottom that's a, that's the W for the world or reality, mm -hmm. which the that's the one that we saw was in uh, the uh, deep structure. And the S is you, but S stands for subjective experience uh, this time. And you are the only one who subjectively experiences yourself. Nobody else can experience what it is to be Noralisa. Mm -hmm. And the I stands for intersubjective. So your communications with me, for instance, are intersubjective. And we tend to talk to each other, but we talk about the world. But we both have our own experiences of the world. So this is this is all completely triangulation, uh, as we discussed it uh, when we're discussing the communication uh, part. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm now adding is that we have this blue uh, 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 swear added to it uh, with a B in it, but I, I could not come up with a good translation <laughs> with a B because it is the B of meaning. Uh, yeah, all right. Meaning doesn't have a B, but it's, uh, it's called betekenis in Dutch. Mm -hmm. We uh, our, our word for meaning starts with a B. Uh, but it is meaning, and I will, and I'm saying this is something that I added both to philosophy as to uh, neurolinguistic programming, is that the B of the or the M for for meaning is actually in the height structure. So rather than uh, make a uh, difference between the surface structure and the deep structure, I make a uh, distinction between three different uh, structures: uh, the deep structure, which contains reality, you know, which is deeply unknown to us. We can only know how reality appears to us. And um, mm -hmm. then we have the surface structure where you can actually, everything that happens in the, uh, that can be picked up by our senses, but especially communication is what's happening in the surface structure. And then together with all the members of the language community that we, uh, that we are part of when we speak a certain language, in this case, we speak English. So we, we have this community, worldwide community of everyone who speak English and together we uh, create the meaning of the words. Right. So this has all been a deeply philosophical question. Uh, what's the meaning of meaning? How is meaning created? 
How is it possible that we know what we're talking about? And uh, there no, there's no good answer, uh, depending on what you, which school of philosophy you like. But I'm a Wittgensteinian uh, in this case. I don't know if you ever heard of Wittgenstein. Uh, yes. He is, uh, he's probably the most famous philosopher of the 20th century, even though an Italian philosopher called Bruno de Finetti should have that title because he's much more important to philosophy than Wittgenstein. But Wittgenstein came to the came with what I think is the best answer and what I think is the right answer is that meaning is use. That is of course again pretty behavioristic, even though that Wittgenstein is trying to deny that he's a behaviorist. Um, because uh, when you know how to use a word, then you actually know what the meaning of the word is. Does this make sense? Yes. And uh, but but if the, if if meaning is use. That means that if you name, if you take a, sim, a simple word like dog, if you want to have the meaning of the word dog, then you should interview every person on earth who speaks uh, English and ask them, how are you using the word dog? Hmm. Because if you don't do that, then you might miss a subtle uh, differences. <laughs> right. And so that means that not only reality is in principle unknowable, because it's also uh, in principle, unknowable, uh, that, or it's not in principle unknowable, but in practice, we, we cannot interview every single person on earth to check uh, how they use the word the dog. And then we have to do it for all for all English words. And it's, it is not, not principle impossible, but in, practical, in practicality, it's completely impossible. So we have these two layers, so the deep structure where reality is, which is ultimately unknowable, and the meaning, which is also ultimately unknowable. Uh, but the reality is, uh, is unknowable in principle and the meaning is unknowable in practice. Mm. So what you find in the dictionary is actually a summary of the use of words. So if you, want, if you don't know a word and you have to look it up in the dictionary, what you're actually doing is looking up a summary of how people use the word. It's how it's most commonly used, but it's not the, uh, the final definition. So if someone, especially, uh, of course, younger, younger generations, for instance, the teenager I just banned, he is probably, um, uh, he's trying to, I say, uh, make sure that old people like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only old, you're probably a teenager. <laughs> I'll leave it to myself. Old people like me, he wants to dis uh, dis uh, distance from, uh, from me. So he's going to try and find new, uh, new uses for old words. So that I get confused. You know, well, what does he say? I don't understand this, <laughs> this teenager. He is, he's, he's not using the words right. And a teenager can learn of, <laughs> he right. learned new words. Uh, so yeah, well, I'm from the 80s. So I think cool is still a cool world, word. But probably is. <laughs> teenagers, teenagers nowadays think if you say cool, that you're so old fashioned. Yeah. But of course, uh, my parents, they do, they didn't understand at all. Is it uh, why it's not cold at all? It's summer host. Why, why are you talking about cool things? It's, it's quite hot, and they would not <laughs> understand what we meant uh, because we found new uses for old words. Yeah, and so it's quite important to uh, understand that uh, where is meaning located? It's not located inside our brain because if the meaning is uh, how every single person who is capable of speaking the language. Uh, is uh, uh, is contributing 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 to the meaning that it, I can't have that all of that in my head. It's just too much, and and I don't know it because I haven't met uh, every single English speaking person in the world yet. So uh, and even if I I've, I know you for quite some time now, and we spoke. Uh, uh, I, you know, I did most of the speaking, but. Um, even now, I, I've, there are so many words that I still don't know how you are you how you 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 are going to use them. Uh, so, so you see, I can't have the complete meaning of words inside my head. <laughs> right. Well, the other day I was looking at this social media post and I saw these younger kids describing the post as as loud. Apparently, that's a new expression, like saying something is loud uh, when it's really relevant. Look, like, I don't know. All right, yes, so that's the new use that teenagers yeah. came up with. Uh, and, uh, uh, but it all, all of those uses are, are part of the meaning of the word. And so that, the, the, but we still, we, we still think that we know what we're talking about. And we still think that we know what words mean. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, but it's actually uh, what what's inside our head is actually a special code that um, teaches us or or stores. Well, I, should, I shouldn't say teaches, but I should say stores that actually stores the way that words are used inside our head. So at the level of uh, uh, neurons, these are actually uh, connections between neurons. Some, some are strengthened, some are weakened. And that's the reason why we can actually speak or write. And then we know how to use the words. But mm -hmm. there's a trick. We can make the, of course, we don't know how the code is uh, related to all the neurons and which uh, if I learn the word loud, as you mm -hmm. described, then uh, if I uh, remember it tomorrow, then it is somehow coded in my brain. That means that certain uh, uh, connections are strengthened inside my brain, others are weakened. And that's how I learn a new uh, use for the meaning of the, of the new use for the word loud. Mm -hmm. um, but I have no clue which uh, which connections, right? It's not like my brain is saying, oh, Joost, just to be clear, we get a strengthened <laughs> connection X25-64 uh, and we weakened uh, A23-ZI. Uh, uh, if only because there are literally trillions of uh, connections inside my head, even if even if I could get have a list, eh? uh, billionaires are really scared of dying, so they're currently trying to develop brain scanners. Uh, <laughs> they can actually try. I'm not sure whether they actually can whether they are trying to uh, be able to read every connection, but they do. They do want to read the brain at the neural neuron level. And um, so even if it was possible, and then I could. Uh, look at how my neurons are firing in the next morning when I learned a new use for a word. It would be such a massive amount of data that I still could not do anything with it. Oh, really? But fortunately, there is a way that we can discover it. This is because we can somehow make conscious if we learn a new uh, use for the word or, or look into the old uh, meanings, then we can actually see what kind of uh, internal behavior it triggers. You right. can look at what kind of uh, feelings does it produce, what kind of um, uh, imagery, mental imagery, what kind of thoughts in inner self talk does it trigger? Uh, because if I, if I talk about to, if I just talk about you about holidays, do you like holidays? Oh yeah. See, that makes you already uh, look quite different. And if I say. Uh, uh, would you prefer a fascist regime in the US over a democratic one? Mm. <laughs> no. No. So, so, so you can see that uh, holidays versus fascism is a quite a different meaning, but it also uh, conjures up different feelings, uh, images, and inner self-talk. Right. And now, and actually, what we uh, so the senses uh, we call with a technical name called, we call modalities. Mm -hmm. And so there are five modalities, which is basically what you see, what you hear, what you feel what you smell and what you taste. Those are the five modalities. Right. And then there is stuff what we call submodalities, which are, um, I say, uh, uh, well, I've, I have the Dutch word in my mind, but cannot come up with the uh, uh, English word, even though it's a very, I know that it's an easy property. Yeah. It's a very easy word for me to uh, just yeah. know. And I do vaguely remember reading about some modalities in the NLP book I was reading. Um, I, I I can visualize an example, but I can't. I I'm not finding the words at the moment. To, yeah, no problem. Uh, but, um, and so um, we can uh, start off very easily by just asking you: Have you ever had a great holiday that you, uh, uh, if you go back in time and remember it, you will remember it fondly? Yes. Okay. So I guess that when we when you remember it, it actually somehow there appears some kind of picture, right, or some kind of mental imagery. Yes. So is this a two D or a three D uh, mental image? Three D. Three D. It does it mean that it's uh, completely uh, surrounding you? You are completely in it, or is it a small like box like that you see in front of you? I would say it's completely around me. I. I can think back to how it smelled, uh, like even tasting the air almost, uh, because I was near the ocean. And, right. Uh, yeah, the smells. And so we, now we have already found two properties of your visual, uh, uh, of, of the visual, uh, visuals that you created. And right. we know it's in 3D rather than 2D. 
and we know it's all encompassing rather than uh, a kind of box, small box. All right. And actually, what we'll see is that those are the properties that actually uh, code the meaning inside our head. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have already done it because everything that uh, the brain does, it's like I can say everything that neuro linguistic programming does, is working with submodalities. But in fact, everything the brain does is working with submodalities. Of course, not really. Uh, the the submodalities are just how we experience it subjectively uh, in our conscious. What's um, what's below there is this network of uh, strengthening and weakening of uh, connection between neurons. Right. Uh, we can somehow uh, figure out how the code works through these submodalities by making them conscious. Mm -hmm. And if you actually look at what we did with spinning feeling technique in the first episode of uh, this uh, course, is that we actually looked, okay, where is the feeling located? Is it in your, in your chest or is it in your belly, in your head? And that's one of the properties. That's another submodality. Oh, yeah. And so I say that you have a, if a negative feeling is in your chest and it is uh, contracting, uh, that would and that would be the definition of how your brain defines the uh, meaning of uh, a uh, negative feeling, oh. or even you might even add, add more words to it: a stressed feeling or or an anger feeling. So, but those actually those those, those meaningful words are created by uh, stuff that we can subjectively experience as submodalities. Right. And then what we did was we actually changed those submodalities. So they, uh, rather than uh, going and uh, contracting, it would, would go out. And rather than have a uh, negative color associated with it, with a positive color. And then you start to feel good. And maybe you will get a complete new positive feeling, like a fountain that goes up. And, uh, and that is actually then the definition of a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, again, we did the same with uh, good and bad decisions. Uh, there was a location for good decisions and bad decisions, and our brain put these in images on two different spots. And mm -hmm. again, those are properties, those are submodalities, and we actually use those submodalities to uh, understand how we could improve our decision making. Right. Yeah, I see what you're getting at here. Right. Huh? So if we took at the black and white rewinding technique, uh, the fast phobia cure, if we had bad experience in the past. We remember them in uh, color, and but color is part of the code which creates this negative meaning. Right. And we discovered that when you change from um, the remembering in color to remembering in black and white, mm -hmm. then suddenly the meaning has changed and uh, the negative feelings disappear. Oh, yeah. So let's see. You can uh, read the... Uh, text on the screen? Oh, yes. Good. Because we, we have literally a huge list of uh, submodalities. Um, I'll just quickly scroll through the whole list. So you can see, and we'll go it in, through it in detail. Uh, but you can see it's a whole list. Right. And so what you can actually ask people at any moment in their, in their life, ask them, okay, and here's a kind of freeze what you're experiencing now. Uh, what kind of visual uh, stuff do you experience? What kind of feelings do you experience? What kind of inner self-talk do you experience? And maybe uh, smell and taste eh? in the case mm -hmm. of your uh, memory of the ocean, then there was a smell and the taste of the ocean. So right. uh, that can be part. And then you can actually list all the, all the submodalities, all the properties in these uh, columns. Yeah. And as you can see, we have two columns. We have the current situation and we have the uh, desired situation because this is basically how NLP solves anything. Hmm. Uh, because the idea of NLP is that anyone, every person on earth has experienced a set of submodalities in the past that will be the solution for the current problems hmm. uh, if he or she is able to, uh, uh, I say, uh, reactivate those uh, submodality uh, codes. Wow. Uh, would you be able to send me this list? Uh, yes, that's no problem. Uh, it's actually at least also, I can have it in for my own notes. Yes. Uh, it's also on NLP Flix. My, okay. uh, but I think it's in Dutch on NLP Flix. But let me quickly look and then I can add the uh, Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So, oh, what did I do? Here you are. So, okay. I'll put it in the chat and I'll send it to you, but I'll add the um, uh, English version uh, to the NLP Flix uh, link and then you can download it. Thank you. Um, because even though it's quite a boring list, and we'll next week we'll do it uh, in a more uh, elegant way, uh, then we go over by strategies. Because here the idea is literally, if you are if you are in a current situation that is not to your liking, that is not to what you want, uh, or even more abstract, if you can say, if you have plans, if you have uh, goals, if you have ideas about how you want to change your world, that's the desired situation. Hmm. If the current situation is different from the desired situation, then you can use this uh, model to actually change from the current situation towards the desired situation, just by ch changing the submodalities. Hmm. And is the desired situation, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Is the desired situation something that uh, would occur like minutes from now or years from now or? Depends, yeah, that depends. Uh, for instance, for me, I uh, did I learn, yeah, no, I learned it more through feedback, but we'll see, but we'll go for next week. But um, I desired to be a great DJ. Okay. Have you listened to my DJing recently? No. Uh, was the music before the show started, was that yours or? No, it wasn't. It oh. still has, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making music, I'm not producing music, I'm only. Uh, uh, playing records of tracks from other producers. Okay. But I'll put another uh, link into the chat. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Check out my music. Because nowadays I create a DJ, even though I say it myself, but uh, and I say uh, knowledgeable and skillful enough about the whole DJing stuff that I can uh, proudly say that I'm a great DJ, even though I'm tone deaf and arrhythmic. So that makes it a bit uh, of an uh, issue. But in the, at the end of the 90s, uh, in the previous century, I wanted to become a great DJ. Mm -hmm. I thought I was a great DJ, but my ears were just not that developed. So I didn't hear how bad I was. I was really bad. <laughs> and mm -hmm. other DJs tried to explain this to me and it took me years to learn it. Um, but that's actually what you can use as a desired situation and then the current situation. And, but the uh, changes are uh, quite, uh, I say, took years and years of practice and uh, rewiring my brain to get mm -hmm. into a situation that I actually was able to DJ as good as I can. Mm. So even though you can use it for long-term stuff, it's most of the time used for uh, short-term stuff. Really? For instance, do you prefer, um, I say, uh, I check another translation. My English is very bad today. <laughs> do you prefer uh, confusion or clarity? of thought clarity right so then clarity will be desired uh, situation and uh, is there something that you're still confused about that you're still struggling with that you don't know the answer to yes it, like within my life generally i would say yes. yes there are a few things okay we only need one to practice with okay and so but we start with what we don't, what we do with nlp we start with the desired situation okay uh, so now we go back in time. Uh, Josef, do, did you ever have these, uh, uh, in, the, in German they called aha erlebnis, in uh, Greek they call it eureka. So a oh, moment yeah. to clarify, go, oh wow, oh, now I understand it. Did yes. you ever have that moment? Yeah, I have. Okay, uh, and can you go back in time and relive that? Yes. All right, so, uh, and there are officials uh, attached to it? Yes. Good. So now we could just fill in the list. Eh? So let's okay. let's go. Okay. Uh, number of images is one. Yeah. Okay. And so the movement speed is it a still image or is it moving? It's moving. At normal speed. Uh, yes, normal speed. True. So we type in one hundred. Color or black and white? Color. Okay, and so there's a one. And the brightness, uh, if you if it completely blacked out is zero and completely white out is 100%, 50% is normal colors, is there? Is I would say 50% normal colors. Yes. And the focus is basically uh, how uh, I say the, uh, 
yeah, we call it lens, but probably it's also an English lens. Whether, whether it is yeah. in focus or out of focus? Yes, it's in focus. And completely in focus? Yes. Okay, let's add 100. And is there an edge around the visual? Yes, there there is. Uh, yeah, kind of like a TV screen. So uh, we go to associated, dissociated. This is basically, are you looking out of your eyes? Are you in the middle of the whole mental image? Or um, are you uh, as if there's a camera team following you along uh, from a distance that you see your body? Uh, I've associated, I'm viewing it in first person. Good, associated. And can you show me how big the image is? Uh, it's maybe about this big. So the height would be like in centimeters, like 40 centimeters? Uh, yes. A bit more than a foot. And the width uh -huh. would be like 80 or maybe 90? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 80 or 90? Uh, 85? Uh, uh, how about 90? OK. And it's a, so it's a uh, rectangle, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it 2D? It's 3D. 3D, okay. So it's like a box. Yes. Good. And if the if the box is in front of you? Yes, it's uh, I would say very close. Like okay. So um, if I if I if we take the uh, the lower left corner on on the front, I would say it's like 30 centimeters uh, to the side of you. Uh, I would say uh, it's like right in front of me. Oh, so uh, it's probably right in the middle. So that's probably 45 yeah. uh, centimeters, uh, given that it was 90 centimeters. Yeah. Okay. And the Y coordinate, well, that is how high it is. Uh, and you're sitting, so I would say 100 centimeters from the, from the ground up? Uh, yes. 100. And the Z is how much is front of you? Is that quite close to you? Like yes. 20 centimeters in front of you? Yes. All right, here we go. So those are the visuals. Mm -hmm. Now we go to uh, auditory thought. So that's actually inner self-talk. Is there inner self-talk connected to this experience of, yay, I got it? <laughs> um, it was more so listening to other people. Um, there was someone else involved in the situation. Um, it was someone showing me and explaining to me how something worked. Right. Uh, I, I thought, oh, I'm so ridiculous for not knowing this. Like I, well, that's uh, that's the fault we're looking for. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, we take that fault. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it uh, normal volume, higher, lower? It, it was pretty high. It was a loud. Uh, so twice normal. Yeah. And then uh, key signature, so this is the, uh, do you have the do re mi, do re mi, do re, do re mi, Oh yeah, it was like a normal tone, uh, like a, like a mid range, like, uh, like G. Okay, well we have 12, 12 tones, so let's take six. Okay. Uh, and the octave, uh, I thought there's an octave, is it the, it was the mid range tone, but was it also uh, the mid range um, uh, octave? Okay. Yes. Good. So let's take uh, four. And uh, was it what you uh, did? You think it in the speed of your? Uh, uh, I say how you normally speak, or was it faster or slower? It was faster. It was slightly, like maybe seventy-five percent faster. Okay. Then we do one hundred seventy-five. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, oscillation, so you can either have a very harmon harmonic fault. So Oh yeah, I understand now. Or a very uh, disharmonic uh, voice. Because, oh, I understand. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was like. I was like, oh, I finally get it. Oh, what is this? Okay, we go for zero. And it was quite short, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Five seconds, six seconds. I would say three seconds. Three seconds, very short. So we move to in three. So there was no harmony, right? Right. And this was located inside your head, this fault, right? This is where all the faults are most of the time. Yeah. You did not have an out-of-body uh, experience. <laughs> no. So that means that the X is zero, the Y is 110, let's say, and Z is zero. 
I'm trying to move as fast as possible. So in your experience, you also hear this other person talking, right? When you yes. were going back to it. So, so were there, but that was only one, one additional sound. Right. So then we enter one here. Mm -hmm. uh, it should say volume. And the volume of the person talking, was it as normal, as loud as normal, or less loud, more loud? Yeah, slightly softer, uh, less loud. 75%, 80%? Yeah, 75%. And the tone of voice, was it another mid-range? Yes, right. Same one as you, or lower or higher? Uh, slightly lower. So let's make five. Mm -hmm. Octave also uh, a bit lower than you. Yes. And they, well, they probably spoke at the same rate as their speech, right? Yes. And did they uh, speak very uh, uh, in a way that has nice waves, or did they also sound like they had? <laughs> yeah, they sounded uh, slightly lower, uh, like the first voice you did. Okay, that's a one. And mm -hmm. how, in your memory, how long were they, were they talking to you? Um, not long, like three seconds. Also very short. Like, yeah. So there was harmony, yes. And okay, so this is interesting. So this person is probably in your memory speaking to you, right? Yes. But it, it is as if the sounds are coming from you from a spot in your uh, in, in in the uh, room around you. Right. Is that in front of you, more to the left, more to the right? I would say slightly to the right. Slightly to the right. How oh, close? Yeah. Uh, pretty close, like maybe, uh, maybe about fifty or right. forty centimeters. So I would say that it's like thirty centimeters to the right. It's yeah. negative, it means to the right. Mm -hmm. The Y is uh, is it at the same level as your head? And it's slightly lower. Um, slightly lower. Yeah. So let's make one hundred, and the Z is like fifty. Yeah, you said or forty. You said. Uh -huh, yeah. Are there beats still per minute to it? Is it uh, does it does it have rhythm or is it just uh, talk? I, I would say it, it, it happened pretty quickly. It was in an instant, so uh, so like 168 beats per minute. But it's only, that, it's only sort of per minute if there's rhythm. What's the rhythm? Uh, not necessarily, no. No, then we feel then we don't do beats. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you go back to this moment where you go, wow, yeah, now I understand. <laughs> This also gives you a good feeling? Uh, I would say, yeah, it was humbling. Uh, so I would say maybe a 75, 80%. Uh, right, but okay, that's the intensity. Yeah, for the intensity. So what do you want, 75, 77, 80? Yeah, 75. 75. Mm -hmm. And where did the feeling start? Uh, I would say my chest, like my chest, stomach area. Uh, Bit lower like, uh torso right like, yeah so that would be zero seventy zero and mm -hmm. where do, does the uh, uh feeling end up my head okay it goes up inside your head yeah you already decided your head was zero one hundred ten and zero <laughs> now we have one of my uh Favorite one that is the move the, the way the feeling moved through you as mm -hmm. a fx function. And you can make all these graphs uh, with a mathematical description, mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, it just went up, right? Yes, so now we normally I would say you have to make a mathematical function, but I'm not that good at mathematics. But <laughs> it goes up, uh, and uh, uh, this should say heaviness. Actually, it should be lightness. I changed this in my book, which is um, on today. I actually sent it to the uh, the art guys today. Oh, that's exciting! So, was this a light feeling or a heavy feeling? Uh, it, it was. I would say it was 50% on that one because it was light because a huge load was taken off my shoulders in that right. moment, but also heavy because I was like, oh, I should have known this. I should right. have been the one to figure it out. 
but uh, I'll, I'll come back to why we do numbers because we're literally the only uh, NLP course where we use numbers. All the others uh, fill in stuff. But yeah. the problem is if you fill in stuff, then you're going. Mm -hmm. there is a risk that you're going to use uh, meaningful words. But right. this is the code that creates meaning. Oh. And if you use meaning in the code that creates meaning, then you get a circle or a loop and it doesn't make sense anymore. So okay. I, I kind of cheated when I said it goes up. Uh, so that's, that's why I stress that it should, really should be the mathematical function uh, rather than uh, the description. But given that my mathematics is not that good, I'll <laughs> cheat there. But and neither is mine. <laughs> yeah. So the moment you're going to explain why it's 50, then I get uh, suspicious because now you're trying to add meaning to the number, whereas mm. the number creates the meaning. Okay. Can you see this difference? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's the relaxed feeling? Um, I would say a twenty-five percent relaxed. Oh, yeah, oh sorry, twenty. I, I should explain that fifty percent is uh, is uh, I say uh, completely between the balance between tense and relaxed. So, if you're twenty-five percent uh, relaxed, I would say that you should be to sixty-two point five. Hmm. That would be uh, twenty-five percent uh, on top of fifty. Okay. And wind <laughs> doesn't. This is the temperature, subjective temperature. Okay. I just did a Google Translate and you can see that right. <laughs> not everything translated this. So <laughs> or if yeah. you have this, this feeling, okay, wow, now I have it and it goes up. And mm -hmm. uh, do you actually, uh, is it warmer than your uh, body, your bodily uh, temperature? Uh, no, I would say slightly colder. Colder, so 36 degrees. Yes, uh, yeah, that is, by, the, by the way, that is, uh, I say, centigrade, not centigrade, uh, uh, Celsius, like Celsius. Yes, that's yeah. what one I so I'm doing Celsius because I have no clue about Fahrenheit, it just messes my I can do a translate, pretty Celsius to Fahrenheit 96.8. Mm. We'll add it. But we can, you can see we are going down a list quite, I say, uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. But what we're actually doing now is that we finding out how your brain works. Right. So then we have might have uh, secondary bodily reactions following the primary emotion. And mm -hmm. um, uh, is your breathing uh, speeding up, speeding up, slowing down uh, in case? Uh, the, yeah, I got it. I would say it was uh, speeding up. Uh, so where do we go? How many brief breaths a minute? I think you do about 13 to 14 uh, normally. Mm -hmm. So it would move up to 18, 19? Uh, maybe uh, 50. It was a slight increase. Go to 15. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Heartbeat goes faster, slower? Faster. So that would be like 70 a minute? Yes. And your body temperature would stay the same? Uh, I would say maybe it, uh, it rose at least one degree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let me check. Yeah. Uh, huh? What? My Fahrenheit got, oh, yes. So it will be uh, like 98.6 in Fahrenheit. Right. And did you start to uh, sweat? Yeah, I, I probably did. <laughs> but also now when you're remembering it. Yeah. So if 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 one hundred is max sweating and zero is no sweat, uh, how much sweat do you produce? Are you maybe, producing? Maybe it was a uh, fifteen or twenty percent <laughs> sweat. Um, I'll be gentle, make it 15. Okay. <laughs> and are you trembling? Go and go, ah. I would say, yeah, uh, maybe a 30% uh, trembling. This was a, a serious situation. Like, I was almost in tears over this situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, these are called tactile. So did you get these shivers over your of your back spine? Going, <laughs> <laughs> no shivers. Okay, well, 
to zero, and then finally, uh, finally, uh, you start to uh, blush. I yeah, I think at least twenty percent because I I was proven so wrong about something like okay, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, fragrance and flavor. Any normally this is all zero because most people uh, don't have any fragrance or fra flavor. Yeah, in this situation there was no fragrance or flavor. Okay, so we just enter zero, 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 zero. Uh -huh. So now that we've done the whole list, took quite mm -hmm. a while. It's all my fault. Uh, <laughs> practice this more in English. Uh, but now you can, can you understand that we now have a definition of your what I call the eureka moment. Yeah. The breakthrough moment. Yeah. So now let's see if we can actually apply this to uh, your brain in reality. Okay. Because you said there were, there were a couple of things that you're still confused about that you do not have yet had this eureka moment, right? All right. Can you pick one? Um, hmm. uh, how about we can apply it to uh, the hypnosis? Uh, maybe I don't have a full understanding of hypnosis. Is that a good... I don't know. Are you still confused about hypnosis? Not confused, but um, maybe it's just that I need more practice. Um, yes, yeah, so that's uh, that would be the wrong subject. Okay. So other things that you're confused about it could uh, be just a that you're still struggling with, where you haven't found the answer yet. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What could I? Oh, uh, there's that concept of the trim tab. I, I'm not, I don't know if you've been following Ben's uh, notes yes. about, yeah, the, the trim tab. I, 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 I see it, but I don't really understand the full yes. metaphor yet. Uh, okay, yeah, there's something called like, cybernetics, which is quite important. NLP is cybernetics, as we will see okay. next week. And cybernetics is Greek and actually means uh, steerman, uh, uh, ability to be a steerman. So mm. I was reading oh. the whole trim tab stuff and was thinking, why not call it cybernetics? If you, mm. <laughs> you, want, to, <laughs> if you want to make sure that people understand that they are about to uh, steer stuff. Right. That, that was just my uh, thought. But you're, that's a good thing. So you're still confused about it. So let's uh, take it, see if we can create a, um, a Eureka moment on your tr on the tr Ben's trim tab idea. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody should be completely confused by now if they hear it. <laughs> so hopefully we can go through the list. Now we're going to do is go through the, through the list another time. Mm -hmm. But hopefully now that you know what is expected of you, again, it's all my fault, but okay. hopefully we can speed things up. Okay. So if you have to confuse the thing about the uh, Ben's Trintep uh, ID, how many images come up in your mind? I'm offhand, there's at least three images that I recall okay, seeing. Three. Uh -huh. Are they still or moving? Um, they're still images, but he did show me a video of Buckman's oh, yes. Fuller explaining it. So, uh, and color? Let's say black and white for now. Yes, no, um, you don't yeah. get another chance. <laughs> it is, okay. this is it. The brightness is that uh, normal? Uh, it's a little dim. Uh, like okay, uh, maybe yeah, maybe forty percent. And uh, is the focus uh, sharp or is it still uh, less focused? Uh, I would say like eighty percent focus. Eighty, good. Is there an edge? Yes. All right. Associated or dissociated? Dissociated. Oh, I made a mistake. It was associated. Right on the other. The wrong number. And uh, okay, how big are these images? Uh, pretty small. Um, like maybe, uh, like. Like ten by ten. Yeah. That means they're also square. Yeah, uh, just about. Yeah, they're in three two D, I think. Yeah, 2D. All right. And where are where's where, where's one of the images located? I would say the middle one. Uh, uh slightly to the left. Uh, right. Yeah. So 
So there might even be a bit more than 45, say 5, 55? Yeah. And they're the same height? I, a little lower. Uh, right, going to 90. Yeah. And I think they're further away from you, right? Uh, yeah, uh, like, yeah, a little further than the uh, other. Like a lot, quite a lot further. One <laughs> right. Right. Good. See, we can do this very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the inner self talk when you hear, hear about Ben's uh, Trintep? Uh... Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, so maybe uh, about a 20% volume. Yes. Um, well, yeah. that's, that's a fault. Yeah. So it's, it's, you mean it is a fault, but it's a very uh, low volume. Yeah. And the key, is it uh, mid-range, low, high? Uh, mid-range. Okay, so it's the same, same octave? Yes. Was it uh, slower or faster than your rate of speech? Uh, about the same. Is it uh, still, <laughs> or is it already, woo? Uh, no, no oscillation. Right. Duration is also? It's a, I would say it's a longer duration. Uh, All right. Yeah. So how many seconds? Six seconds. Six, good. Uh, no, uh, oh. I also the wrong, this is wrong, there was no harmony. Harmony? No, uh, no, no, harmony. no harmony. But it's still in your, inside your head, right? No out of body yes. experience. Uh, right. So. Here we go. Are there other sounds uh, accompanying uh, this inner self talk? I don't think so. Good. Uh, no. Uh -oh. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> but it does produce a feeling probably when you're confused about Ben Printap's uh, ID. Right. Um, I would say maybe 50%. Uh, the intensity, right. So it's yeah. just, uh, not that intense, but it does produce feeling. And where is it located in your, where does it start in your body? Uh, like the lower left side of my body. Okay. Yeah. So that is a bit to the left. That's like say 20. It is inside your body. Uh, oh, yeah, it was lower, like say 40. Yeah. And it is still inside your body, right? Yes. So, and where does it move to? Uh, it moves towards my stomach. Uh, very slowly. It goes to the middle? Yeah. So it would be a bit higher, right? Yeah. And um, it is also zero. Uh, and now it, it goes up but slowly. Yeah. Goes up slowly and uh, under a, uh, I say, an angle, right? All right. Is it light or heavy? Uh, heavy, uh, like maybe 75% heaviness. Right, so that yeah. would be um, uh, 75%. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. 2.5. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm recalculating, it's no problem. And the relaxed, so it's the tense, it's tense rather than relaxed? Yes. Okay, uh, and how much uh, tense? Maybe, uh, maybe 50%. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. And your temperature, subjective temperature, goes up, same up, down? Uh, uh, same temperature, uh, no change. Okay, so that would be uh, 37. Good. And uh, do you have secondary bodily reactions? Uh, not that I can feel. So this is all uh, the same. Uh, so this would be like 12, 60, this would be 37, this is zero, 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 zero. So you can do this very quickly. And no fragrance or flavor? No. Great. So see, we can, the first time we did it took a long time, but uh, also explained, of course, what it, uh, the meaning was. <laughs> and the second yeah. time we did it quite quickly. Uh, this, this can be done quite quickly as we have seen now.
Uh, but now we have two lists. So we have the current situation where you're confused about Ben's uh, trim tab ID. <laughs> yeah. And we have a desired situation, which is actually uh, something that you experienced in the past, but we're going to give uh, use it to give you a great future. Mm -hmm. Because now we're going to do is completely ignore the whole uh, meaning and content of Ben's trim tab ID. But we're going to experience the Ben's trim tab ID as if you had an Eureka moment with it. Wow. Okay. And so here we go. So you have three small images, right? About Ben's trim tab ID. Yes. Okay. I want you to ditch two and select one. And I want you to select the one that feels best. Okay. Got it? Yes. Okay. Now I want you to actually. Uh, um, I say, uh, I say, press the play button so that the image actually starts to move. And you can actually, it's probably an image of a ship, if I had okay. to guess. So okay. you, actually, you see actually now the ship uh, uh, sailing uh, through the waters yeah. and reacting to how the trim tab <laughs> is moving. Yeah, I'm pushing my imaginary button right here. Good. And now you turn it from black and white into color. So you have this blue yeah. sea, nice colored ship. Yeah. And you, uh, how you say, you turn the, the lens so that it becomes a completely sharp uh, mental image. Yeah. And you associate it with it. You are standing now in the, uh, how you say, in the uh, steer, steering cabinet. I don't know how to call it. Uh, behind the big wheel. And you're yeah. uh, you're driving the ship. Yeah. And we have, uh, we have created this image much bigger. Hmm. So that it's now a rectangle. Actually, it's a box. Oh, and okay. that it is actually uh, much bigger so that you can actually see yourself as if you're uh, inside that box uh, steering the ship. Yeah. Yeah, I see it now. Good, good. Yeah. And so we already changed it from 2D to 3D. We changed it from a square to a rectangle. That's all what we wanted to do. Yeah. And now I want you to um, have your inner, inner self talk. Uh, go up much, much more loudly. You just go, yeehaw, I'm saving. <laughs> yeah. Like uh -huh. Right? Yeah. And I want you to speed up the uh, thoughts. So make them much, come much faster. So rather okay. than having six seconds uh, confusion, I want you to co be confused in three seconds. Hmm. Okay. Because, yeah, la, 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 la. yeah. Something like that. And I want you to add a uh, second person, for instance, uh, Ben uh, himself, standing mm -hmm. to the right of you. Yeah. A little bit lower volume, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit lower the uh, key and pitch, and uh, talking to you. See, so, so now you can experience that if you steer the rudder, of the steer, use the steering wheel, then actually it connects to the rudder and to the trim tab, mm -hmm. and you can uh, notice how. Uh, depending on what you do, you are sailing uh, the ship uh, in a much more accurate way now that you have a trim tab. Yeah. Oh, you, and he's speaking quite in a harmonious way. Uh, no, I already said already uh, to the right of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we had this feeling coming from the left to your the stomach. It was quite mm -hmm. heavy and stuff. But we're going to change it. Once it reaches your, your stomach, we're actually going to make it much lighter, much more intense, and we have it just go much faster, going up, so whoop, going, yay! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it's happening. So we're going to drop your subjective temperature a bit, so that it's a bit co cooler. Yeah. But there's still this. Oh dear, I had it all wrong. <laughs> uh, it's my fault. Uh, tense, tense. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. somewhere. Uh -huh. And we want you to breathe a bit, a bit faster, the heartbeat a bit faster, and have a bit of sweat, a little bit of trembling, and a bit of blushing. So we go, whoa, <laughs> big ship. So how does that feel? How do you now experience the Ben's <laughs> print ID? I, I, I can understand uh, the, uh, the logic behind his idea. Um, I, I'm a little bit more for it now. I can feel the the bias lifting a bit more. Uh, yeah, I. So, are you still confused about it? I, I would say I'm less confused, mm -hmm. uh, but not a hundred percent unconfused. Right. Yeah. So, 
hasn't completely explained the whole trim tab ID, but you can at least feel that this is a much more productive way of experiencing the whole trim tab ID than the original uh, situation. Definitely. And you can also experience that, uh, in fact, your brain doesn't need a new content or new meanings. It actually needs, most of the time, needs a new code to experience mm. what you already know. Hmm. Well, that's, that's a lot to think about. Right. Yeah. So that's how submodalities work. Let's check with our viewers. Are there any questions, <laughs> remarks? Do you have questions, Nora Lisa? Uh, no, I, I I could see myself using this list for myself, um, and once I included it in my notes, I'll, I, I'm going to revisit this and go through it on my own. Ben thinks this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that is how uh, submodalities work. And this is uh, actually uh, how uh, all NLP works, or actually all, all uh, effective brain uh, technology works, mm -hmm. because there is nothing... Uh, uh, nothing else except uh, submodalities in the brain. I guess there's nothing else except the, uh, what do I say, connections between neurons in the brain. Mm -hmm. But we can somehow uh, get the, those coded uh, neurons um, in, uh, I say, uh, uh, somehow reflected in our uh, subjective experience through submodalities. Right. Ben immediately wants to put it in the book as workbook page. Ah, right, yeah. Oh, they are more than welcome to put it in the book. Thank you. So if there are no more questions, then we are done for today. And then next week, we're going to do NLP strategies, which will be pretty much the same as this, but then uh, in a more elegant way, because this was quite, I say, brute for well, I, I <laughs> I took it you are uh, into IT stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, that's what I do for yes. uh, my work. Yeah. And so programming, um, programmers lo love this stuff because this is uh, basically how you can program uh, your uh, own brain. Oh, there is a uh, big question yeah. before we sign off. Joost, a time ago you mentioned for sleeping problems to visualize a digital clock with the subscription sleep through or continue to sleep, but then in Dutch. Would it like this also be possible when you foresee a difficult situation in the future, like the hungry feeling when you're fasting, to connect this feeling previously with another feeling, like the feeling of satisfaction after eating a lot just before fasting? And if possible, do you think this is useful? Uh, yeah, it could be quite useful, uh, but I don't think you need to do this through uh, the technique to program your unconscious mind uh, during sleep. I might have now uh, triggered. Did I explain it to you, Nora Lisa? Um, the one like visualizing a uh, digital clock. No. So, so now I have to explain it to you. Otherwise, you'll go home and think, "What? What are they talking about?" So it's easy to do NLP techniques while you're awake, right? Yes. But how can you do them when you're asleep? Hmm. Well, you can't do it eh? consciously because you're asleep. Right. But you can program your unconscious mind to do it for you while you're mm -hmm. asleep. Yeah. But you do this with these 80s uh, alarm clocks. Do you remember those? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you remember a Philips <laughs> alarm clock because it's a Dutch clock. Oh, yeah, like the, uh, yeah, those big ones. Those, that... Yes, with these red uh, numbers on them, right? Digital yeah. red numbers. Uh -huh. So now I, if, if there's stuff that you want to do while you're asleep, uh, I can, for instance, uh, come up with uh, create no new IDs. That you just imagine a really giant uh, 80s alarm clock, hmm. hopefully from the Philips brand. <laughs> yeah. um, like uh, three meters uh, wide and one meter or two meters high. Uh -huh. And you just program it. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming that you're asleep at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So you just say zero, three, dot, dot, and also my, always these two dots, zero, hmm. zero. Uh -huh. And it's important to first start with continue to sleep because otherwise mm. you wake up, which is uh, not handy at all. Right. So you say continue to sleep and come up with three new brilliant ideas uh, for uh, me to know when I wake up in the morning. Mm. So you just imagine that when you're laying in bed just before you fall asleep. Right. And you can do anything. So if you want to uh, wake up at 7 a.m., 
uh, re refreshed, full of energy, you just say uh, dot z seven double dot uh, oh sorry zero seven dot dot zero zero. Right. Wake up with lots of energy and good feelings to enjoy the day. Hmm. Yeah, but whatever you can make up, you can put on this giant uh, 80s alarm clock, and your unconscious will uh, tends to uh, uh, see if it can uh, you do it actually while you're asleep. Mm -hmm. And so you could do, uh, for instance, what Sheila is suggesting, but uh, I would say that is much more uh, um, uh, handy to use the black and white uh, rewinding technique, because this is about the future. So why not re if you want to um, uh, remove the hungry feeling when you're fasting, why not uh, rewind in black and white the uh, whole scenario where you're fasting and having hungry and, and are hungry, and then see yourself fasting and noticing, oh, I don't have any hunger at all. Hmm. So I would just use that technique rather than uh, do it through uh, the sleep time. Any other questions, remarks? If not, then we're done for today. And then we'll see each other next week. All right. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just checking to see if nobody else has a very last moment a question. But there are no more questions. Bye. Bye.